Hi, this is Lauren from LSP Actions and welcome to video two for the North Pole Cottage digital backdrop for Photoshop. In this video, I'm gonna dive straight into the editing. If you'd like an overview of what's included, how to load it up and how to view the different layers, please do watch video one where I talk you through everything to get to this point. In this video tutorial, I'm going to be editing family images shot on white into this digital background. It's important that you shoot on white for this one because it has a white floor. And if you shot on white, it means you're gonna be easily able to get these shadows in. You see the shadows here in these images? You really want the shadows. The shadows is what's gonna make your image not look kind of cut and pasted. It's gonna be able to blend the family in. There are several video tutorials with the North Pole Cottage. So if you're not editing family, if you're editing a newborn or pets or just a single child for some reason, you can check out the other videos. In this video, I'm going to move as slowly as I can and explain everything when it comes to cutting out subjects, and pasting them in, using layer masks and brushes and adjustment layers to really blend the subjects with your image. So when you finish watching this, you will not only know how to blend a family image with the North Pole Cottage, but you're also going to be able to use these techniques on other Photoshop files too. So you're going to ninja up a level and become Photoshop expert. So let's get started. Let me just move these images out of the way. Now it's important you've edited the image first. So if you've shot on white and the background is a little bit gray, you have some skin blemishes, anything else you need to clean up, please do edit and clean up the image first and not when you've edited in. So the first step is edit your family or your subject image first. Make sure it's clean white, you can see the shadows and there's nothing else about. This is gonna make cutting out a lot easier for you. So you open up the North Pole Cottage file into Photoshop and you'll see in your layers panel here, you have a base layer, you have the sky background and the North Pole background. So you can choose which one of these you want to use, or you can add the family and choose afterwards. All the layers remain editable. You have the orange layer here, these two orange layers, place subject in front and place subject inside. You can watch the video for placing a subject inside the house. For this video, we're gonna be placing our subjects in front of the house here. You have the option here to close or open the gate. You can turn this on or off with a little eye. Again, if you're unsure of anything I'm doing here, please do watch video one. So I'm gonna close the gate for this image because I'm not putting anyone inside the house. I'm gonna be positioning the family in front of the house here. You then have the options up here for adding the window adornments, these little berries to the windows if you want, or you can keep it minimalist, or you can go kind of full Christmas here you can add the snowman in if you want to, and you can turn on the actual snow layer here. See, by clicking it on or off. But I'd recommend doing all that afterwards. So the first step is to select the right layer for adding your family. I'm gonna do this by hand in this video. I'm gonna give you some hand editing techniques, but if you use the LSP actions, you can also use the, let me grab this up for you. You can use the LSP uh, Newborn Digital Background Photoshop Actions to add and blend your subject in. But for this particular video, I'd really like to teach you a little bit about hand editing, um, which is rare for me. <laughs> so let's get started. Make sure you're on the place subject in front layer, not the place subject in behind, because if you add a subject here, they're gonna end up inside this house. So place subject in front, come up here to file and choose place embedded rather than copying and pasting. If you place your subject in, it means you retain full resolution. Locate the pre-edited image on your computer, make sure it's edited and click place. And you'll see this appear in your image in the right, in the right place. It will just place it straight onto the right layer, which will be orange for you. Resize this to suit. I mean, kind of use your own discretion when it comes to resizing this image. I mean, you could have the family really big and pretend the house is small. There really is no scaling here. Um, so kind of use your own discretion when it comes to adding this family in. If you want a little bit more control, you can turn the opacity of the family layer down a little bit here. If you're using the actions, it will do this for you just to see exactly where you're placing them. So you kind of want the feet in this white area here. And when you're happy with the placement, hit enter. Let's turn the opacity up. So the next step now is gonna be editing and masking. 
Now the whites in this image, I don't know if you can see, the shadows are a little blue and the whites are a little purple, so we're going to need to balance the colours out to suit this digital, which we can do that in a moment using adjustment layers and I will show you how. So first of all, you want to add a layer mask to this um, family smart object. It's a smart object, which means it retains all of the information. So you come down here, the little um, icon that looks like a Japanese flag, click on this, and it will add a white block box to the right of your image. This is a layer mask. White means everything shows. Let me control or command I to invert it to black. This means everything is hidden. White is to show, black is to hide. So you can grab a brush over here, just your normal brush tool. My brush is set to 100% opacity. Make sure it's on normal, 100% opacity and around 50% flow. Choose black to hide or white to show. You can hit X. You can either hit this little arrow here to see switch foreground and background colour or you can hit X on the keyboard to turn between black and white. Right click to change your brush size. I'm going to make it a little harder. And you can start painting the family in like this. So you can see why it was important you shot on a white background, because now we have all the shadows intact. If you're using Photoshop Creative Cloud, you can hit the magic wand up here and choose Select Subject, and this will give you generally a pretty good cutout of your subjects. You see that? It's quite good Photoshop at, at selecting the subjects. And you can use this on the layer mask to paint or hide. Now you have a selection, so if you, for example, invert the selection and grab a black brush, you can start painting away the background and the effect will not show on the family because you have them selected, so they are kind of protected from your brushing. And that's done a pretty good job of cutting out the family already. You can see there are still some white areas here. So go ahead and hit Control or Command D to deselect. Grab your brush on black and start manually painting these away. There are so many ways to select um, and make a cutout of your subject on Photoshop. This is literally just one way of doing it. If you want more information on um, kind of advanced cutting out on Photoshop, you can go on YouTube. So make sure you've got a really good selection. You'll see here, because this green gate is behind, there's this very slight white halo here around the selection. So hold down Control or Command and click the layer mask up here and this will bring up a selection of your whatever you've painted. Come up here to select on the top menu, down to modify and hit contract. This is going to bring your selection in a little bit. I'm going to actually just contract by two points I think, two pixels here. That's quite good. Now I'm going to come up and invert the selection or you can hold shift control or command I to invert. Nothing will change, but it means that this area is selected rather than the subject now. Grab your black brush and you can see you can start painting away any white halo. So it basically just hones that selection in and gives you even more of an accurate cutout. So I'm just stroking this anywhere where it needs to go. So just keep um, scrolling around the place, filling in any areas you need using a black or a white brush. I'd recommend a hard white or black brush. You see there's a little bit here, so I'm going to grab the black and paint that away. You can turn the subject layer on or off to see if you've missed anything. That's quite a good way of seeing if anything jumps out at you. And once you're happy with your general selection, now it's time to refine the hair. Again, if you're working with an earlier version of Photoshop, um, this will be a little bit different. So first of all, I recommend holding down Control or Command and clicking the layer mask so you get um, some marching ants of your selection. You can see here there are a few little areas I forgot to paint away. Okay, so we have a marching um, ant selection all around the subjects here and you can see the hair needs a little bit of work. If you're on an earlier version of Photoshop, come up here to Select and choose Select and Mask. If you're earlier version, your Select and Mask will come up looking like this. If you're on Creative Cloud, you can come up again, control click um, or command click to make the selection, click on the layer and if you come up to select a mask on a later version, you will get this, um, this window pop up instead. It gives you a few more options. 
I like my view mode to be on overlay, so it's red, so it shows you what isn't selected in red and what is selected in white. You can pop the radius up a tiny bit. This will um, allow Photoshop to figure it all out a little bit more. You can shift the edge inwards. So you see here, there is some haloing around the boy. So you shift the edge inwards. It basically brings the selection in or out. The refine edge brush is here um, on the left, the middle one. Or you can hit R. You can use this one to stroke around the hair to hone that selection in. And again, it depends on your shot, how successful this is. Photoshop is getting better and better all the time at masking, um, but it's still got a way to go, I believe, before it looks good, a little bit better. Hit OK, output to selection, and then you can come here on the layer mask with a white brush to, hi um, to show and a black brush to hide. But again, there are so many videos on YouTube that you can use when it comes to uh, refining the selections of your subjects. Now, the light in the digital. Although there's two lights on this, the main light is coming from the left. So if your subjects are lit from the right, you're going to need to flip them. And you can see here, these subjects are lit kind of from this angle. The light is coming down. I need it to be coming down from this side. So click on the layer. Hold down Control or Command and T to bring up your free transform box again, as it was when you first placed the subjects. Right click and choose Flip Horizontal. And that will bring your subjects um, around to the right way. If you do not want to flip the subjects, but you want to actually flip the whole background instead, you can come up here to Image. Let me just get off this. Image image rotation and flip the canvas horizontal that will flip the whole house horizontal instead now i've noticed there is some blue in these shadows which doesn't really go with the feeling um, of the digital now i'm going to get rid of these shadows so i'm going to come down here to the adjustment layers and we're going to add a few adjustment layers now to do um a few different things so it's the little circle half and half Click this and choose for the uh, for colouring. I'm going to choose hue saturation. If you're using the actions, you will already have one to desaturate. Um, so if you're using the actions, you can do that really easily. So right click and choose create a clipping mask, and that will clip this adjustment, um, the any adjustments made to your family layer, not the background. So now I'm simply just going to take some of the saturation down a little. And you'll see there that's taken this blue colouring out of the shadow. You may find your shadows are a little yellow, a little purple, a little blue. So you can do this to take some of the colour out. Click on the Hue and Saturation white box. Hold down Control or Command I to invert it. This makes it invisible again, just like we did with the layer mask on the family. Grab a white brush and start adding this in over the shadows. And you'll see it's taking that blue colour out. And again, because this layer is active, you can simply double click on this icon here and you can take the saturation down or change it more if you need to. Light purple tint to this image with the white balance, um, which doesn't go with the, um, the tones in the digital. So again, I'm going to clip a layer, an adjustment layer onto this to tackle that. I'm going to choose a colour balance layer. Right click, create clipping mask. I'm going to switch over to the highlights because I can see the purples a little in the whites and just move this slowly into the greens to take some of that purple out. Can you see that? I'm also going to click on the mid-tones of the image, so change the drop down to mid-tones and take a little of that yellow out of the skin. Pop a little red in maybe. So you can see there before and after, it's very subtle. I'm not sure if you can see it, but it just blends the family's toning in a little more with the digital background. Now I'm just going to balance out the, um, the brightness and the tones in the image a little bit. So I'm going to come down here again, click on the adjustment layers and use levels or curves, whichever one you're more comfortable with. Right click, create a clipping mask. It's Groundhog Day, isn't it? Exactly the same. I'm going to darken them down a little. This one affects the blacks in the image, so that will make the, the darks really very dark. The middle one affects the mid-tones of your layer, and the white um, the, the right one affects the highlights. So I think I'm going to bring the mid-tones down just a touch, 
maybe the darks, just a little. And just play with this until your image matches the um, the general highlights and shadows of the digital background. And at this point you can resize your family if you want to, reposition them if you need to, and carry on playing until you're happy. You can turn on the different backgrounds here to create more of a scene. You can turn on the snow too, on or off. So here you can see me using the exact same techniques I just used for this different photo of a family on a white background. You can see the uh, the light is in the right place for this photo. They actually have a reflection underneath them which looks super cool. Um, and I'm using the exact same techniques I just used. This is just sped up, just to show you you can achieve the same result with a different family. You can catch the other tutorial videos to see how to composite in pets, single children um, and subjects inside the house, which is super fun.